Coming up next on The Jeff Crilly Show, you're going to meet the CEO of Jackson Pottery, and he's going to tell us all how he molds new leaders. His journey just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. So we all have unique gifts. I think one of my gifts is storytelling and interviewing people. That's why I do this show. And I'm fascinated with other people who have also discovered their unique gift. Forrest Jackson, the CEO of Jackson Pottery is in the studio today. Thanks for coming on the show. Oh, thank you. Yeah. We were talking off camera about how your passion is really taking employees and growing their leadership skills. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, understanding people is critical. Um, having conversations with other CEOs over time it's the people aspect of, of the business that is the hardest. And so if you can spend time understanding who you people, who your people are and what they want and what motivates them, what makes them happy, it's, it'll, it's a game changer. And so the company, a little history lesson, uh, 1983. Yeah, my dad started in 1983 as a retail garden center. Mm -hmm. And now 150 employees. 150 employees between the two uh, sides of the business, yep. And I can tell from your passion that it is a family business and a family company and you care about your employees. What's your favorite story of an employee uh, recently that you helped grow? Yeah, it's funny that you asked that. Um, had a great opportunity recently to promote an employee who started in their teens in our warehouse working, pulling pottery. And seeing this guy grow and develop... Um, as he got a family and he bought his first house was big. And then recently he became our operations manager and that kind of success story. I mean, that's, a, that's an awesome thing. And I, I think everyone was happy for him. And I especially was happy for him. He doesn't like public praise. So I didn't point it out in many <laughs> meetings, but on a personal level, I definitely let him know. Yeah. And I want you to appreciate the, the, the kind of business that uh, uh, Forrest is running. So here's an overview video. It's hard to believe that almost 40 years has passed since Jackson's first opened our doors. My dad has always been a businessman, even from his early beginnings, selling vegetables on the roadside near his family's small East Texas farm. The level of poverty and difficulty my grandparents had to endure was tough. And thankfully, my dad was raised in a church with a strong belief that God had plans for him. He was the first one to go to college and really pushed to break the cycle of poverty in our family. I grew up on a small farm in East Texas and not far from my farm was a railroad track and every night about midnight this train would come through and it would blow its whistle at the crossing and i used to think that train is going somewhere and i'd like to be on that train going wherever it's going someday i'm going somewhere after a series of successful businesses my dad discovered his dream opportunity a small warehouse in dallas selling italian terracotta the owner of the business offered my dad the opportunity to fly to italy tour the factories for himself. Most people had been farther on an Easter egg hunt than I had been on a trip, so this was really exciting. After seeing the factories and the romance of Italy, I told my wife on the way back, I can see myself doing this the rest of my career. I sold off our other businesses and opened up Jackson's Lemon Avenue Pottery. The pottery store didn't just remain a shop for Italian terracotta. Since 1983, it transformed into an area landmark for all things home and garden offering the finest in patio furniture, fountains, specialty gifts, fireplaces, grills, and a robust nursery and greenhouse. Being a family business, we are intimately connected to our employees and customers, receiving lots of suggestions and ideas. I think that's been what has made us so successful in part. But the biggest thing has been God's faithfulness and help. Our business now has three distinct divisions. Jackson's Home and Garden, our retail, Jackson Pottery, our wholesale company, 
at Jackson Cast Stone, our commercial grade manufacturing division. Jackson Pottery's mission is to be the preferred brand in the marketplace and do what's necessary to help you win. We're familiar with the pressures and concerns that retailers have to deal with, and so having Jackson Pottery on your side, supporting your business, is critical. There are several strengths that we bring to the table, one of which is what Forrest and Bob bring with their background in the retail garden center industry. But the big one is our commitment to stock inventory year-round. We keep $2 million or more in our warehouse so that we can respond quickly to the needs that may arise. We know our customers have varying seasons, and we work closely with our sales reps and distributor partners to get the timing right on inventory arrival. I'd venture to say that we change up and innovate more than any other wholesale pottery supplier. We know you need to keep it fresh and interesting to create return customers and help increase your sales. Over the years, Jackson Pottery's gotten sharper and smarter about our programs and offerings. So not only are we getting product and customer smart, but we are developing programs to help our customers be successful. From pre-booked pallet assortments to early buy and volume discounts, we really are customizing plans for you to capture the best products and the best programs to support your sales. Our new website with B2B online ordering empowers you to take charge of the ordering and check inventory levels to help ensure your selection. We're always here to help, but having access to that program is going to be a game changer for you. You'll get access to new products that get introduced outside of the catalog and see any specials that we're running at the time. Thank you everyone for watching. We look forward to spending time with you soon. Wow. So as you reflect on that, you started working with the company when you were nine years old? Nine years old. Yep. Lawsuit pending for working that young. <laughs> <laughs> but what I love about that story is that uh, you've really done everything that there is to do in the company. And so uh, when you're coaching an employee, you can say, look, I used to do that. That's true. I just had that same conversation yesterday. Like, look, I've, I've been in your shoes. But before I tell them what to do, I ask, what do you think you should do? Mm -hmm. You have an opportunity. So I, you know, we both uh, navigated COVID and there wasn't really a, a playbook for the pandemic. How was that for your employees? Were you considered an essential business? And what were, what were the conversations with your employees like? When, it, when COVID first hit, it was right when the season was supposed to be taking off because the lawn and garden business in general, whether you're retail or you're wholesaler, it's super seasonal. So when it first hit, everything stopped and we had to lay off a bunch of people. It was extremely difficult. And then of course, within 30 days, I was desperately trying to hire them back because we got the essential business uh, waiver and it was Katie bar the door. Yeah, so talk about how you um, reassure employees during troubled times. Well, we reassure them by talking about who we wanna be because identity is the foundation for a successful company and successful group of people working together. So we talk about who we wanna be and so then we, any actions or, or discovery or changes you make with inside your organization are based on your identity and where you're going. And I want to put your website up and scroll down the website and I want you to kind of describe for us because uh, your, your side of the business is really the, the wholesale side, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, years ago, we separated the two sides between our retail side, which my dad is passionate about, and the wholesale side, which is largely pottery and uh, cast stone planters. Um, the pottery side has is, is always been really fun. We've been able to travel the world, go to Vietnam, Malaysia, all over the world, uh, finding all new planners and new designs. Um, and it's, I mean, it's really fun, not gonna lie. Yeah, I think I heard that during the pandemic, because so many people were at home, that was the, the whole you know Bed Bath & Beyond, Home Depot, all those uh, companies that were into home improvement took off. Did you see a similar spike? No, uh, it was astronomical. We, we couldn't, uh, we, we didn't have enough inventory, not even close. And so all of, what was great is all of our customers won big as well. Um, so even though there were, it was more difficult for them, all of our garden centers to whom we were selling had to figure out how to sell online or how to use mobile devices to help, help people virtual shop. But they had a successful run and it was incredible. It was a, it was a great time. Okay, so since you started when you were nine years old, are there still some employees around that from when you started? Uh, not from when I was nine, no. Um, my two brothers worked for a bit there, but they got smart and decided to do other things. <laughs> gardens, the gardens in the world, the pottery, it's not an easy business. I tell people like, what's pottery? It should be easy. And they start laughing. 
All right, talk about the culture that you develop at, at the, uh, the company. What, what do you look for in new hires? Um, well, one of the things we talk about, and then I'll tell you what I look for in new hires. Um, one of the things we talk about is you have to be for each other. Because if you're not for each other, there's an African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do you no harm. And that kind of inside being for each other is super critical. So we ask questions about that. And during interviews, we ask questions about how they handle conflict. We encourage people, if you have a problem, to go to someone and talk to them about it. Um, it's, it's so important, that kind of dynamic, because you will unlock mysteries. You will unlock people's potential when there's not that friction or, in some cases, just avoidance. Sure. So that kind of honesty and openness and then being willing to be coached, being willing to hear, being open to feedback, all those are important things. Okay, let's talk about your management style because I know you're not a micromanager. Nobody wants to be micromanaged. Uh, but w when you see an employee or a team member doing something that you think, I, this is a coachable moment, you step in and say, hey, you know, I kind of saw how you interacted with that coworker or I saw how you interacted with that customer. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually famous for putting employees in a room and just sitting down and going, okay, go. Let's talk about it because you guys have a problem and this isn't working out. We just try to get it over with right away. And in terms of the coaching style, I learned something from uh, many years in Vistage from a guy named Dennis Howard, who was, he was a great Vistage coach here in, in, uh, in the area. He said, if you want to give someone feedback, ask them, are you, are you open to some feedback? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gave you some feedback. And you know, most people, of course, would say, well, yes, I'm open to feedback. I mean, if someone says no, obviously you're not going to give them feedback, but they work for me, so they got to say yes. So you get their permission, and they're much more open to hearing what you have to say. And generally, we're hiring growth-minded people. Sure. So it works out usually. And I think it's also important for, um, you know, a lot of leaders watch this show, for the leader to listen. I think so many leaders are obsessed with, you know, I'm gonna, I know what I'm going to tell this person. Right. And you might not have all the facts yet. Yeah, I never enter into a situation, whether it's sales or, or employees or anything, with I'm the answer that I've been looking for. Mm. That's a big mistake. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying I don't have opinions, but um, definitely I try to find out the facts. Yeah, I, I know I've, I read a lot, and so do you, that there are those leaders that uh, will start the meeting with, um, you don't want to hear what I think. I want to hear what everybody in the room thinks mm -hmm. so that it doesn't become a, you know, a yes man situation. That's right. And in fact, before a meeting, I always start out with what's the most important thing we talk about today. And the reason I do that is because I want to clear their minds because if they have something that's pressing or bothering them or they just need to make sure it's on the agenda, if you don't get it out, then they're going to be thinking about that the whole time and they won't listen to their teammates and they won't listen to me. Sure. I know a big problem in this country right now is quiet quitting. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was growing up, it was, hey, life is not a bowl of cherries, kid. You pay your dues. <laughs> and now there's, you know, 23-year-olds wondering, you know, uh, how, how many vacation days they get and, you know, what the perks are. And There is that. Um, it is different uh, coaching. One of, one of the challenges with being a Gen X is sometimes you stand between the boomer mm -hmm. and the millennial and you got the boomer saying, I'm going to work 50 hours a day and, you know, right. I'm working hard, nothing really. And this guy over here saying, I want to save space. And, and so I, you have to stand in between and be like, wait a minute, and <laughs> find this common ground between them. But they're both valuable in what they bring to the table. So bringing out that value and then helping them understand one another, it's the same theme over and again. Um, really important. Outstanding. Well, uh, in the little time we have left, uh, what advice would you like to give the leaders watching this show right now, just in terms of mm. a strategy or a way of looking at their own business that m they may not have thought of? You know, I can say this from my failure and my success in doing different things in business. Napoleon said, leaders are dealers in hope. And I know what it's like to fail. I know what it's like to make mistakes. I definitely know what it's like to have difficult times. And of course, I know what it's like to have the mountaintop experience and big success. In any which direction, in any which circumstance, deal in hope. Mm. Great way to end this show. Uh, Forrest Jackson, we're going to end with the website, which is jacksonpottery.com. The great Forrest Jackson. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.